Hi, welcome to Don't Kita. I'm back with a new video called How to Control DS18B20 Temperature Sensor Using MicroPython with a Weather Station Project. In this video, we are going to be interfacing with the excellent temperature sensor called the DS18B20. We will create our own DS18B20 MicroPython Weather Station Project wherein we will display the current temperature readings and the history of the last 12 breeds. For a demo of this project, then I have here my ESP32 MicroPython device and connected to it is my DS18B20 temperature sensor module. I created a web application that will display the sensor readings in two charts. One is the gauge chart, which will show the latest temperature reads, and a scatter or a line chart that will show the latest 12 historical leads. Sensor readings are automatically displayed, and if I try to hold my DS1820B sensor like this, then I am expecting that the temperature will change, which actually happens. So, as you can see right now, the temperature has shot up to 31.8 degrees Celsius. And if I remove my hand, then I am expecting that the temp temperature should go down. Notice from the graph here that the temperature is now beginning to fall down. Same, same also with the temperature at the gauge chart. Would you like to know how I did this? Then let's start exploring. Before we proceed, we start by checking out first what is the DS18B20 sensor. The DS18B20 sensor was developed originally by Dallas Semiconductor and it's an excellent temperature sensor with high accuracy. It has the following specification and does not require any external components to function. It follows the one-wire protocol so we only need the data and the ground pin actually to communicate with it. It comes in two packages, one is the transistor light package and the other is the waterproof package which is used for underwater application. The important thing in the specifications in here is that the conversion time needs 750 milliseconds which we are going to use later in our code. For the wiring, we only just need to connect the following. You can choose any GPIO pins that you want as the one-wire protocol is supported by the ESP32 MicroPython. So as you can see in here, just connect the ground to the ground and the 3.3 volts to the BCC of our DS18B20 sensor. I'm actually using the module type of the DS18B20 sensor. So aside from the transistor package, we, we, it also contains several components attached to it. This diagram shows the design of our DS18B20 weather station project. As you can see, inside my ESP32, we have configured a micro dot web server that displays the web application. The web application is configured to request DS18B20 temperature readings every 3 seconds. When this request is received by our micro.web server, then it forwards it to our ESP32 to communicate with our DS18B20. The DS18B20 then returns the readings back to our ESP32 and our micro.server returns it back to our web application. The web application upon receipt of the readings will update its value up accordingly and it will do so asynchronously meaning we don't need to click any buttons or refresh the page. So before we continue let's discuss a little bit about the anatomy of our graph chart. I have here the graph the gauge chart and as you can see there is the latest sensor reading and the value 0 0.3 here is what we call as the amount at which it is over our threshold. In our case in here, I have configured the threshold to be at 30. 
So since the reading is already 30.3, it means that the value is already ex exceeds by 0.3. The other graph, which is the line or scattered chart, just displays the last 12 historical chart. So meaning if the historical reading exceeds the 12 values, then the first reading will be dropped from the line chart. Now, regarding the project layout, uh, this is how I structured my project. So as you can see, I have here my static and template file. This static and template file will contain my HTML, CSS, and JavaScript file. The boot.py will connect to our Wi-Fi. So when our ESP32 MicroPython is restarted, then automatically it will connect to our Wi-Fi. The DS18B20 module will talk to our sensor, and the main.py will contain our web server routes. The micro.specific files are files that are micro.specific, and I just copied it from the micro.project source file. If you open this project in Tony right now, then you would see that this is the complete file structure. If we try to open the boot.py, then you would notice that the boot.py will just connect to our Wi-Fi. Just remember to replace the credentials in here to match your Wi-Fi network configuration. Uh, DS18B20 module is the file that communicates with our DS18B20 sensor. So as you can see, it contains a class called the DS18B20 module. And in the constructor of this class, we just declare an instance of a one wire and an instance also of a DS18X20 class. Both of these class are supported by MicroPython out of the box, so we don't need to install any external library to be able to use the OneWire protocol. The other, the other methods in here is the get temperature readings. So in the get temperature reading, you would see that we're just scanning the uh, our one wire bus line to check if there's any DS18B20 that is connected. If not, then we'll just raise a runtime error that it, it was not what it was not able to find any DS18B20 20 sensor. Otherwise, if there is a DS18B connected to our one wire bus, then we call this convert temp and we call the sleep port 750 milliseconds. As I have mentioned before in the specifications of the DS18B20, we need to pass in 750 milliseconds for the sensor to sample its reading. Upon sleeping for 70 mil 750 milliseconds, then we'll just read the temperature by, by calling the read temp and passing in the ROM or the unique ID assigned to that DS18B20. The main.py is our web server. So, we have initialized our micro dot server here and defined several routes. Our root or index route will only return our index.html page. The slash update values route is sent by the web application to request for sensor readings. So we use our earlier class that we defined, which is the DS1820B module reading the temperature from our sensor. So as you can see in here, it calls the get temp reading. And then when the reading is retrieved, then it returns back the, the data using JSON. The shutdown and the static path route are used for uh, sending back the JavaScript and our CSS files in here, including the templates also. And at the same time, it, the shutdown is just a convenience method for us to shut down our web application. Our index.html page will contain the following important elements, which are the temperature gauge div and the temperature line div. This will be processed by our plot D, JavaScript library in drawing the graph. So as you can see, we are only declaring the two divs in here that will contain the graph of our sensor reading. But the overall job of populating this value falls into our index.js page. 
The index.js page will do all the heavy lifting. Its job includes initializing our graph. So in this case in here, these are the configuration parameters needed by our gauge. And we also have something for the line chart. And in the, we, we have added an event listener to the DOM content loaded. And when the HTML DOM is loaded, then in this part, we just call the platly that new plat and we just pass in the configuration option including the layout the layout object is just basically sets the height and the width of our graphs now the other job of this index that is, is to declare this array uh, this array will hold the sensor readings that was retrieved from our this 18b20 sensor and the maximum number of readings that we're going to save is only 12. there is a function here called the update plot uh, which the job is to call the update values route so when the update values route is called and it returns a json response and what we're going to see is that it will just read the uh, readings and then after re reading the return data, then what we're going to do is to update the readings. So as you can see in here, there, there, is, there are two methods in here that checks if the, the length of the array exceeds 12, then if it, it exceeds 12, then we'll just ship the array and then drop the first record. And then the, if the two arrays will now contain the following information. One is the current date, which is which refers to the our current time, and the other will contain our new reading. These entries, the data update, are used to update our graph. So as you as you can see in here, it at the end of the function it calls the platly that update and it pass in the new information regarding the new reading. The code in here, which is the function called loop, this will be called every three seconds. So this loop will automatic, automatically call the earlier function, which is the update plan. So as you can see, as I have mentioned, that the graph will automatically uh, update itself. So this is the function that sets the automatic update. The CSS files in our static uh, folder contains the index CSS and the mean CSS. So these two files, the job of these two files is just to stylize or beautify our index.html page. The other files in our project, which is the micro dot, and files in here are the micro dot specific files, which I just copied from the project source file. And that, that is all on how the code works. If you need additional information about this project, then please see the companion write-up on it on my blog. The write-up and code are in the description of this video. So for any comments or questions, then please reach out to me by commenting in this video. I hope you learned something. Happy exploring!